Late in July 2016, Sea Shepherd will arrive to the waters of British Columbia. They are here to support biologist Alexandra Morton, who is trying to prevent the spread of a dangerous virus from industrial salmon farms to the wild salmon. Wild salmon are the main food supply for the region's resident orca population, some of which are already showing signs of starvation. Recently, Alexandra won a landmark court decision which ruled that the salmon farming industry could no longer stock their farms with diseased fish. In 2014, I got a tip that the salmon farming industry was putting diseased fish in the ocean. And so I went to court with EcoJustice. I took the Minister of Fisheries and Marine Harvest, the biggest salmon farming corporation in the world, to court because we didn't think it was right that they could put diseased fish in the ocean. And we won. And the whole court case was based on Piscine Rio virus. And so as it stands today, salmon farming industry cannot put Piscine Rio virus infected fish into the net pens on our migration routes unless they get express permission from the Minister of Fisheries to transfer diseased fish, which really isn't going to be a very popular thing for a minister to allow. It's a very significant win because it would seem that 80 to 90 percent of the salmon farming industry is infected with a virus called Piscine Rio virus. And if they're not allowed to put Piscine Rio virus infected Atlantic salmon into the net pens of British Columbia, I don't really think they have fish that are not infected with Piscine Rio virus. So as a result of this ruling, it doesn't appear that they're lawful in British Columbia. Alex first discovered Piscine Rio virus in BC when testing farm salmon in the supermarket. When she had the virus sequenced, it revealed that the virus was of Norwegian origin, likely having arrived to BC somewhere around 2007. Alex had this research published. Piscine Rio virus is a very contagious virus that damages the heart of salmon. And we know about it from what happened in Norway. It spread very rapidly through their industry. Uh, they think it's spreading to their wild salmon. They think it prevents a wild salmon from swimming up the river. And when I sent samples of British Columbia salmon to Norway, to Norwegian scientists, they said, oh yeah, that virus is from Norway and it's a real problem. When we sequenced the virus, it was more or less identical to a Norwegian uh, Piscine Rio virus which means that you have moved a virus from, from the North Atlantic to the Pacific. <laughs> that is always a case for concern. Piscine Rio virus, or PRV, was first identified in Norway in 1999 in the salmon farming industry, which has a tendency to breed superbugs because of the factory farm style of fish farming and the overcrowding of fish. PRV quickly spread throughout the Norwegian salmon farming industry and in 2010 was identified as being the cause of a disease called HSMI. It was suddenly one day, it was, we had a kind of a, a new disease and, and uh, the disease was described and the virus was subsequently isolated and characterized. HSMI is now the third leading cause of losses for the largest salmon farming company in the world, Marine Harvest. It's a pretty serious disease. The concern is that BC has much to lose in the way of wild salmon. There are over 100 salmon farms along the migration routes of BC's wild salmon. Many of these farms are in narrow channels, so when a farm has a viral outbreak, it can quickly spread to fill these channels with contagious viral particles. So our little salmon come out of the rivers, they swim by the farms, they pick up Piscine Rio virus, and they carry it on up the coast. Piscine Rio virus in the fish farms causes 100% of the fish to start lying against the side of the net. It's called morbidity. It can cause 100% of the fish to, uh, to be so exhausted that they can't even swim around the pens. So if you translate that to wild fish, well, <laughs> they really can't lie around because the predators will get them and they'll starve to death. Whereas in the farms, you know, the food's just falling from the sky and it's very easy to make a living. In the farms, they can recover, but in the wild, where the predators are after them, it's incredibly dangerous for them to become slow and weak. Because uh, a salmon with HSMI in the wild will have reduced swimming activity and will not be able to escape predators so such a salmon will not survive for a very long time. They can't survive 
if they don't have a heart that is working well. When you start testing farm salmon, so I have to go to the supermarket to do that because the farms won't let me test their fish, 95% of them are infected with Piscine Rio virus. I see these heavily infected fish in the supermarkets all the time. They're the long, skinny, thin ones. When I test those, they are just full of the virus. But the industry is so desperate to make money, they're putting them on the market to sell. When I won the lawsuit in 2015, Fisheries and Oceans, DFO, and Marine Harvest immediately appealed it which makes you think that they actually need to use diseased fish. They appealed the decision that said you can't use diseased fish. Piscine Rio virus has significant legal implications in British Columbia. Because it appears to be causing disease, therefore it is a threat to the conservation of wild salmon, and the whole industry is infected with it. So <laughs> it's very unclear whether salmon farming is currently lawful in British Columbia. Sea Shepherd is teaming up with Alexandra to conduct an audit of the farms to determine how many of them may be infected with the virus and therefore violating the court ruling. There's no evidence that the salmon farming industry has responded to this ruling. I believe they still are putting diseased fish into the waters and that is what we're trying to find out. We're gonna go out and we're gonna go farm to farm, first of all, and look for these fish, the ones that are swimming slowly on the surface that can't dive down. And we are writing letters to the minister and we're going to ask the public to write letters to the minister and ask him, are you allowing Marine Harvest and the other fish farm companies to put diseased fish into the waters, the migration routes of our wild salmon in British Columbia?